Hello and welcome on another tutorial in Scandi PWA tutorial series. Today we will learn the React lifecycle, uh, the React component lifecycle of course, play around with it and uh, we'll create our first component where we will count the button clicks. Simple as that. Let's get straight into it. This is our VS Code which we set up previously. Here we will overwrite the index.js file and uh, the application should start compiling right after we save it. Let's import component from React and let's also import the React DOM from, you guessed it, React DOM. And let's call the React DOM dot render. And here we should pass the component and we should pass it as a render template. And then we should pass here the element where we expect this element to render. So it's uh, document get element by ID. And I know the element name is root. We can uh, switch to Chrome and see how it looks like. Well, here we go, the empty page, it's kind of arguing to us that you guys did something very wrong. And that's because we passed the component inside uh, and it doesn't have a render method. So let's define our own uh, class component and let's say we will call it a button and it will extend the component. And we should implement the render method and inside we should return some valid JSX syntax. So in this case, let's simply return, you clicked me. <laughs> okay, uh, still the same issue, boom. Now we're passing in the correct uh, element and you can see uh, we have rendered the template correctly. Very nice, very nice. Uh, now let's consider adding a button. So let's add a button here and um, let's say click me now. Click me please. Again, checking the browser, we see a button. It's clickable, everything is great. Now let's add a handler for button click. Let's call this on uh, button click. And let's say it's a simple function and let's console log, you clicked me. So we're console logging if you're clicked button or not, but if you open a console, nothing happens here. That's because we need to assign a listener like on click listener to our function. So let's pass in our function on button click and let's see what happens. We expect it to work and it does. But the issue here is that if we start to implement a state and let's actually try it. So let's say state equals the click count, let's say. And let's by default say to set it to zero. Here, let's try to increase it by one. If we take a click count from this state and if we say that this dot set state click count equals click count plus one we expect it still to work and to function properly, but we will get an error that this, but the state of undefined. And what it means is that essentially this here is undefined. How can we resolve it? Well, we need to transform our simple method into the function property. So let's define it. So on button click is now a property which is equal to an arrow function. So the context should be correct. Now, if I click, you can see that you clicked me is shown. So this means we are on the right track. Let's now output the results. So I say you clicked me and let's do a bold output of a value. Uh, let's use bold and say click count. Of course, we don't know which click count, so we should import it right here in this function. And let's see if it works. Not, because uh, there is a parsing error. Why is it? So the 
JSX expects one root element while we gave him two. So this one will work as expected. So let's format it a little bit differently. And now it's compiled successfully. So you can see that you clicked me, now works, and it outputs the value from state. Very good. Let's consider this example. There is a different way how we can write this. We can also write it like this, this set state, where we can take an argument, uh, click count, so we pass in a function, and we will return, also notice I'm writing, um, I'm immediately returning plus one. So this is an another way to write uh, the same stuff like here. It also works, uh, but mm, do you guys know what this is? This syntax is essentially the same as writing this dot state, state dot uh, click count, but we prefer this one because it's uh, more obvious. So you uh, immediately declare variables you will be using in the template instead of looking into the template to see which variables will be used. So now we are updating the state. I will switch back to this one because I prefer it more. And the state, this one, uh, the state can also be declared differently. This is the property declaration. We can also declare it like this. We can say constructor. Don't forget to provide a props argument to it. Let's pass props up to our component, to this one. And this is very familiar to you from your favorite OP languages like PHP. And we can say that we're doing the constructor where we are calling the parent method. So the super is a reference to a parent uh, class, which we extend. And we can declare this state here, and this should work the same way. Once you wait a second, yeah, it works the same way. So we can declare it as a property. We can declare it as a, a value uh, in constructor. Let's consider now the component lifecycle. We created a state, but how can we control uh, what component is currently doing? If it's updating or if it's rendered or not rendered yet, but already called, can we uh, trace this down? Yes, we can. So let's first add a console lock here and see when it will trigger. And let's also to see what happens at this state Let's try adding uh, a div here and let's uh, set its ID to some value, like an example ABC. So we can later query this element here. We will, in our constructor, get element by ID. Uh, yeah, so this is not here, this is constructor. We expect element with ID ABC to be present, but we can see that it's a null. Why? Well, because when we call the element, the element still hasn't been rendered. We need to wait until it renders to see it on a page. So let's implement a component that mount and uh, do the same logic here. So we say mount, uh, component mounted, and we can see boom, the construct has null and response, the mount has an element in response. This means that in the did mount function, we can implement, let's add a comment here, implement any DOM manipulation. So in case you want to add a CSS variable or in case you want to get some access to a DOM node, you can do it from here because uh, from this point on, the DOM uh, node is available. So here in constructor, we can do stuff which is unrelated to DOM, but we want to do it beforehand. In example, we can make requests here, uh, anything, but the DOM manipulation. So as you can see, we are making requests uh, in constructor we are working with the DOM in component that mount or later on. What else do we have here available? The other method which is present is called component did update. 
and this allows us to see if uh, something was updated on the component. Let's see how it works in a browser. Let's watch the updates happen. So boom, I click the button and the component got updated. So the state triggers component did update. So let's see, uh, triggered by state change. What else can trigger it? Well, the props change. But what are the props? We are, we're still unfamiliar with them. Let's uh, do an interesting trick. Let's create another component. Let's say this will be a wrapper for our button. And it will also extend the component. Uh, inside of this render function, and I know it will argue on me, so let me disable this max classes per file. So we are just playing around, nothing too serious, so we can skip uh, declaring only one class per file. But later on, while developing real projects, stick to this rule. Do not declare more than one component in the file. So this will be a hello. And let's use, uh, let's use this as, let's declare a div. Let's put hello into this div and let's here call a button component and uh, let's render wrapper component instead. Let's uh, also disable this one. Notice what I have disabled, it's Candy PWA guideline and the ESLint max classes per file. Good. And let's in inspect what just happened here. We declared a new class wrapper, which has a render function, which calls the button and something else. Plus, we are not rendering a button anymore. Instead, we are rendering a wrapper. So we see hello, we see button, and uh, this is also working. Okay, let's add something into wrapper so it can also update a state. Let's just copy paste the logic from on button click, on button click. And let's also provide a button here. And this one will be update wrapper, yeah? And update wrapper will also have an on click listener. And inside we will pass this on button click. Uh, the last thing we are missing is to declare the state and let me get the declaration from here. So let's define a state. So again, the wrapper in our case has a state, it has a click count, but this time, this time we're setting a state of wrapper instead of a button. So if we're clicking on a button inside of the button component, the update gets triggered. If we click it here, the update is also triggered. Why is it so? Well, that's because when the parent component updates, it also the bottom components could also update. And this is inefficient. Uh, so because nothing actually changed in the button. So the right way to go for it would be to use uh, to implement a should update method for our button component. So we can say should component update, it gets next props and next state. It should update if next state uh, click count, let's say next click count is uh, not equal to current click count. So if the state click count changed only then we update. If uh, click count is not equal to next click count, then we return true. Otherwise we return uh, false. And we should put it uh, right around here. Let's see what happened here. We implemented a should component update. We check here if the next state which will be applied is different from the current state and only then we say the component should be updated. Let's see now if the wrapper update will trigger 
the logic. No, we can see the update is not shown. But if we trigger it here, the update is shown. So you can see no update and update here. This allows us to be more efficient. We do not call any logic if something specific, in our case, the click count in state wasn't changed. This is tedious in case you have multiple props. So what's the faster way around it? The faster way around it would be to use pure component instead. Pure component is the same thing as the normal component, but it does the shallow comparison of the props. What it means, it takes a JSON string of uh, the props and the state, and it compares it with the next representation of those props. So it's just a string comparison. And let's see uh, if it works the same way. Now, if I click it here, the update gets triggered. If I click on update wrapper, nothing happens. This is why by default, it's preferred to use pure components because most likely you won't be able to efficiently implement should update. But in case you know what exactly should trigger the update of your component, you can of course implement this method, but you can only do it in case you are extending the normal component. I will stick to pure component for now. This time I will pass my state value, this uh, from wrapper to a button. And I'll say this is wrapper count. And let's say the click counts uh, from wrapper is passed inside. This is called a prop. It looks just like an HTML attribute, but this time it's a property. And that's a prop which we pass to a button component. Let's see what happens now. Remember, we are still pure component, but now if I click update the wrapper, the update also gets triggered uh, in the button component. Previously, it wasn't so, which uh, makes us understand that component did update triggers is not by the state change, but also by the props change. So if the props or state change, the component did update gets triggered. The pure component is not really a help in this case, but uh, it's also bad practice to pass a prop which is not used. So instead of uh, implementing the should component update function back, let's consider using the wrapper count variable in our logic. Let's check if it's updated. And if it is updated, let's uh, update our own state. We got this update here. And uh, I, I know that component did update receives the previous props and previous state. And we are interested if the, let's say, const wrapper count from this props and uh, wrapper count as previous wrapper count from uh, previous props. Cool. So let's see if they are different. So if current wrapper count value is different from the previous wrapper count value, then we will update the state. Set state and let's say that the click count is equal to wrapper count and something is not right here. First of all, the wrapper count is missing in props. Uh, this means that we should provide a typing to validate a prop value. So if we say static prop types, we can say that there is an element wrapper, there is a prop wrapper count, which we expect to be a string. So we need prop types. Let's import it, prop types from prop types uh, and prop types dot number. Let's say that it's uh, default and the wrapper count by default will be equal to zero. So th there are two ways. You can either say wrapper count is required or your prop is required, or you can say it's not required, but then you should provide a default props value to it, so default value. And you can see it won't compile. It says uh, do not use state set state in component update. 
That's a little bit strange to us. So let's uh, instead log the update here and see if the component gets updated. And then we will see how we can handle the issue with an update. So we can click, 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 everything is nice. Then we say update. It says us it was updated, but because we commented out the state setting, nothing is happening. So let's then disable this uh, check for this line and see if it will work. I'm clicking the button component state, then I click on update wrapper, and then the button component state gets reset. So you can see that we can click whatever times we want, but uh, after we click on update wrapper, the counter gets reset to a wrapper count. Yes, yeah, so if I click it here, then click it here, I will get back to 12 now. I don't like disabling rules, so why does it argue? Well, setting state in the component that update is very, very uh, risky because this could lead to an infinite loop because as written here, the, it's triggered by state and props change. So your check here has to be very, very specific. So setting state in componented mount is risky, but there are times where we really, really want to do it. So what are our options? There is an, another method called static get derived state from props. And this one receives props and the state as an argument. And this is a static function, so no access to current values is present. The same as no access to this is present. So we cannot call something uh, from our component. Everything should be static inside here. So what we want to check is the same check if the wrapper count is different. We can add this line, copy this line here. Uh, but we can see that previous value is not defined as well as this. So we need to use props, but previous wrapper count is still undefined. How can we get it? Well, in this case, if we want to update the state, we should also keep the previous count in the state. What we should do is we should go to state declaration here and we should say that previous wrapper count is zero. And uh, then we should take the previous wrapper count from the state. This is a little bit confusing in the beginning, but trust me, this is efficient in terms of state setting because now we can return the state update. And in our case, if uh, they are different, we say that the, the click count is equal to wrapper count. And we should also update the previous wrapper count with a new wrapper count. Uh, so the previous value which we compare with will be updated. Good. Otherwise, we should return null as a state update. So get the right state from props should be placed um, before the dead mount component here. Good. So now after it compiled, we can check the logic out and see it should work just the same as it did previously. We can click and update the wrapper always resets the original counter to its value. But now it's done safely, so we cannot get into infinite loop here. And the note for you here is uh, you need to keep a uh, previous value in state. With that said, I believe we have covered the largest part of the component lifecycle. And in the next tutorial, we will be able to start adding the styles to our component and see what is the BAM and how it's involved in Scandi PWA. I hope it was useful for you and you learned something new. Thanks for watching.